Welcome back to BT. You know what? It was only a matter of time before this book came out. The uh, Pocket Butler's Guide to Yes Travel. Charles <laughs> McPherson is back. You know people have their pet peeves, Charles. Absolutely. The public service begins right now here on BT. Uh, there are so many great questions. So we're going to go through as many as possible. But great. the idea of traveling, you're staying with friends or family. How do you share the expenses if you are the guest in their home? So I think the most important thing is to bring it up. Just because you're going to someone's house, whether it's, you know, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, don't assume that, that, that because they're the host that they have to pay for everything. You know, so you need to be able to, from the very beginning, up front say, listen, let's share the costs. And, and that makes it easy. And having the conversation up front makes it really easy. Maybe the person say, no, 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 it's okay. So then say, well, then let me take you for dinner or let me do something. And so for me, it's always about talking about it ahead of time, not afterwards. This is how I know I've become my parents because this is what happens. No, I'll pay. No, you'll pay. No, I'll pay. Half an hour later. Or You're still having the conversation. And you're thinking, hmm, yeah, it's okay if my parents pay. Right? Yeah. Uh, traveler's insurance. Anytime I go on a trip, the credit card says, hey, we've got you covered. Is it important to get outside traveler's insurance to cover absolutely everything? Great question. So the most important thing is to understand what your credit card covers because credit cards don't necessarily cover everything. So they do offer great insurance. It's a great benefit to have with certain credit cards, but check to make sure that you're fully covered because you may want an additional insurance. It depends. We don't want to find that out after the fact. Well, that's the, because probably you can't get it afterwards, obviously. Yeah. Okay. We're going on the airplane. <laughs> this is where everybody will chime in on something. Uh, do you ever check in luggage when you fly? All the time. My pet peeve is I refuse to walk through the airport with luggage because airports are big, they're long, and I don't want to be huffing and puffing with my suitcase. Even if it's the regulation size and all that kind of stuff, I am a firm believer I check everything. And you take a photo of the luggage too as you talk about it in the book. Absolutely, because for me the issue is if it gets lost, I want to be able to go to the counter and say, this is what it looks like. So I do, and I did that when I was a butler before cell phones and so I used to take pictures of all the family luggage and so when I was a butler the most I ever traveled with was 47 pieces of luggage Whoa! <laughs> and I had pictures of everything okay he's got the evidence to back it up <laughs> yeah. now what do you think is the best place so where is the best place to sit on an airplane so you know that's a really interesting question because the, the smoothest ride on the airplane is actually in the center of the airplane, where if you're at the back, that's the bumpiest, and the front, because of the, the equilibrium. So the center is the smoothest. Now, if you're talking about seat, some people love, for example, the front row, because it's called the bulkhead row, because there's not a seat in front of you. But those seats tend to be narrower because, you know, the tray has to come out. So for people like me, I'm not so comfortable in those seats. So now now the question is, do you want the window, do you want the center, do you want the aisle? I'm an aisle person because I like to feel like I've got, I can just kind of get out. I you feel trapped. Exactly. I feel trapped by the window. Middle seat, who gets the armrest? So, very simple, the middle person gets the armrest because the person on the window can lean against the window, the person in the aisle's got the aisle, so let the person in the middle have the armrest. person in the window takes the armrest from the middle, how do you... Uh... <laughs> I would just bump them off. <laughs> tough love, tough love with the elbow. What do you do if there's someone that's fallen asleep or someone that keeps talking to you? How do you navigate through those awkward situations? So, okay, so the falling asleep, you know, is fine unless, of course, you have to now get out you know, to use the washroom or whatever. So at that point, don't just crawl over them because they're going to wake up when you're on top of them. <laughs> it's just a fact of Murphy's Law. So you need to be able to kind of nudge them and say, you know, excuse me, I you need to get that. out. <laughs> and the talker, for me, it's about, you know what? Really interesting, talk to them for a few minutes. But for me, it's about, if you don't mind, I've been traveling a lot, you know, this is a little white lie. I need to get some sleep, let me close my eyes. Or I'm trying trying to finish the chapter in my book that I'm really enjoying, so I hope you don't mind, I'm going to go back to my book. And then you have an awkward four-hour ride right after that. <laughs> like, I was trying to be friends with this one. Listen, th that's all the time we have for questions. The Pocket Butler's Guide to Travel, excellent new resource for you and yours if you are planning an all-important trip. CharlesMcPherson.com is the website. Always good to see you, Charles. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll talk during the break, okay? Perfect. Don't shut me out. <laughs> I need this time. Uh, more of your job news stories coming up. Stay tuned.